In this video, I'll be proving the monotone convergence theorem for Lebesgue integrals. First of all, we're going to need some prerequisites. First of all, if I have a sequence of measurable functions fn from n equals 1 to infinity, and of course fn is going to be between the measure space x sigma mu and into the closed interval from 0 to infinity, then I know the function f of x defined to be the limit as n goes to infinity of fn of x is also going to be a measurable function. So the limits of measurable functions are measurable. Number two is that if f of x is a measurable function from this space into 0 to infinity, and it's less than or equal to g of x, a measurable function from 0 to infinity, that means that the Lebesgue integral over x of f d mu is less than or equal to the Lebesgue integral over x of g d mu. Now you may wonder, do these functions have to be bounded? Because you said that we needed to have them bounded for the Lebesgue integral to exist. Well actually no, we don't need them to be bounded. It's just if they're unbounded, then um, their integrals are just infinity. Number three, is that if I have a nested sequence of measurable sets, such as E1, a subset of E2, a subset of E3, so on, then the measure of their union, so the union from n equals 1 to infinity of En, is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the measure of En. If you want to see a similar topic discussed, uh, look at my Measure Theory 1.4 video. The fourth thing you need to know is that if I have a measurable function, f, then I can construct a measure, mu f, which is defined by if e is a element of sigma, then mu f of e is just going to be the integral over e of f d mu. And this is going to be a measure because, as I discussed before, it's infinity whenever f is unbounded. And the fifth thing you're going to need to know is just the normal monotone convergence theorem, which is that if I have a sequence a n from n equals 1 to infinity, and I have it that a n is less than or equal to a n plus 1, that means that the sequence converges to some value in the interval from negative infinity to infinity inclusive. That's to say that if this sequence is unbounded, its limit will go to infinity. All right, now let's state the theorem. The monotone convergence theorem for Lebesgue integrals is that if I have a sequence fn from n equals 1 to infinity, and I know that each of those fn's are measurable from the measure space x into the closed interval from 0 to infinity. And I also know it that fn of x is less than or equal to fn plus 1 of x for every x and element of x. So in other words, it's monotonically increasing. If I know those two things, then I know that the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over x of f n d mu is equal to the integral over x of the limit as n goes to infinity of f n d mu. And this right here is the pointwise limit. So it's the this. So for monotonically increasing sequence of functions, I can exchange the limit and the integral. This is very similar to dominated convergence, although this is what we'll use to prove dominated convergence. So the way we prove this is by first verifying that the objects exist. So first object we need to verify exists is the limit as n goes to infinity fn. Well, let's say f of x is the limit as n goes to infinity of fn of x. Look at number one. This guarantees that because of each of these being measurable, then this is measurable. Therefore, this integral exists and this function exists. All right, then the second thing we need to verify is that this limit 
exists. So first what I'll recognize is that because fn is less than or equal to fn plus 1, I know by number 2 that the integral over x of fn d mu is less than or equal to the integral over x of fn plus 1 d mu. This tells us that the sequence of the integrals of each of these fn's is going to be monotonically increasing, and then by the monotonic convergence theorem, I know that this limit must converge. So this exists. So now let's go ahead and prove two inequalities. One is that this is less than or equal to that, and the other is that that is less than or equal to that, and then we prove they're equal. So the first one is actually very easy. By the fact this is monotonically increasing, I know that fn is less than or equal to f, which means that the integral over x of fn d mu is less than or equal to the integral over x of f d mu, which is, of course, by 2. This tells us that the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over x fn d mu, which is just the supremum for n bigger than or equal to 1 due to the fact that this is monotonically increasing of the integral of fn d mu, which, because supremums are well behaved and because of this inequality, is less than or equal to the integral over x of f d mu. So we've proven the first inequality, now let's prove the second one. This one takes a lot more work. First of all, let's assume alpha is an element of the open interval from 0 to 1. And let's also assume that we have a simple function s of x less than or equal to f of x. The reason why this is useful is because this we see a lot in the definition for Lebesgue integrals. It's the key component. So first let's define E n alpha to be the set of x and element of x such that fn of x is bigger than or equal to alpha s of x. The reason why we have this alpha n element from 0 to 1 is because the fn of x's are less than f of x. And so getting this alpha in here will make it a lot better because it makes this smaller. Now this is a measurable function because it's closed, as you can check, and under the Borel sigma algebra, closed sets are, in fact, measurable. Notice now that the integral over e n alpha of alpha s d mu is going to be less than or equal to the integral over e n alpha of f n d mu due to the fact that e n alpha is the set where this is bigger than or equal to that, and then by number 2, we have this inequality, which is then less than or equal to the integral over the entire space of fn d mu. All right, we'll use this fact later on, but right now, let's move on to proving some inequalities. First of all, because fn is less than or equal to fn plus 1, and by the definition here, that means that e n alpha is a subset of e n plus 1 alpha. This tells us that these e n alphas are a nested sequence, which I can think you can see where that's going. Now let's also prove that every single x and element of x will be an element of one of these e n alphas. Let's first suppose s of x is equal to zero. Well then, trivially, x is an element of e n alpha for any n. But then, let's just assume that s of x is bigger than zero. Well then, the limit as n goes to infinity of f n of x, which is just f of x, has to be bigger than or equal to s of x, which is bigger than alpha s of x. What does this tell us? Well, this tells us for some sufficiently large n that f n of x is bigger than or equal to alpha s of x due to the fact that the limit is bigger than or equal to alpha s of x. So that means that there exists an n such that f n of x is bigger than or equal to alpha s of x. 
Oh, well, would you look at that? That means that x is an element of E and alpha. Basically meaning every single x in x will be an element of one of these E and alphas. Or in other words, the union from n equals 1 to infinity of all of these E and alphas will be equal to the entire space. This is all we'll need to prove the next section. So this is just working with our integrals. So the integral over the entire space of alpha s d mu is going to be equal to by number 4, the measure associated with alpha s of x. And then this is going to be equal to the measure associated with alpha s of the union from n equals 1 to infinity of E and alpha. Due to the fact that they're equal to each other, which then, by number 3, is then going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of mu alpha s of E and alpha. Which then is the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over E and alpha of of alpha s d mu, which then by this inequality is going to be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over the entire space of f n d mu. So in other words, I know that alpha times the integral over the entire space s d mu is less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over x of f n d mu. But guess what? Alpha was arbitrarily between 0 and 1, meaning it can approach infinitely close to 1, and similarly to the epsilon lemma that we've been using, I can then remove that alpha and still have this hold. Basically meaning that the integral over x of f d mu, the limit, which is equal to the supremum of the integrals of all of these s's. But because the supremum is so well behaved, this has to be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over x of f n d mu. Which is the other inequality. And therefore, we are done. And that's it.